win in Arizona? Are we sure this team is dangerous in the playoffs? And finally, you know what? What? On the advice of my attorney, or maybe on Mac Jones's, we don't need the spot shadow. Oh, yes, we, we do. Spot shadow. Yeah. Yes, Greg, we do. Thought that was a dangerous play. Come on, we'll get into oh, it. Yeah. Exactly. In, in for uh, Chris Broussard, it's Super Bowl champion Greg Jennings. I'm Kevin Wild. That's Nick Wright. Do you want to say something fresh about this? I don't know. I mean, listen, little did we know, that, you know, that Dirty Mac was going to. Oh, gonna, Dirty Mac. Well, oh, yeah, oh, let's go. Dirty Mac, man. Uh, We've heard he should, many a time. He should have tackled. He should have face masked Chandler Jones. But he can't accidentally fall down. <laughs> uh, we start in Dallas. Cowboys. Top Gardner Minshew and the Eagles. 40 to 34. Dak overcomes. Early pick six to go for almost 350 and three touchdowns. Defense did let Gardner cook a little bit. So, Nick, yeah. are you more or less confident in the Cowboys after the W? Way more. And I think Way they more. should be. I think their fans should be. I think their players should be. Uh, that if they were to get around three of this matchup, they could win. Jalen doesn't play defense, and the Cowboys scored 40. The Cowboys, this to me was the best win, the signature win of Dak Prescott's career. It, Dak has had some great numbers, some great seasons, but he hasn't had a ton of amazing moments. Like, when you think of prior to this, was it maybe the touchdown pass in overtime against your Patriots last year? Nice when he tweaked his, I think he tweaked his cap actually on the play and had to miss some time because of that. That was a nice one. His one playoff victory, he was not great in that game. Mm -hmm. I thought his best game of his career actually is a loss. The playoff the game playoff against game Green Bay, his rookie season. Yep. But that, there's another similarity there between yesterday's game and and that rookie season, this is the best Cowboys team since that 2016 season. Dak's first year, Zeke's first year, when they were 13-3 and three and just got beat by a red-hot Aaron Rodgers in that playoff game. And that third and 30, to me, was as good of a moment as this guy's ever had. And to start, they, lost the, they almost lost the Texans game because Dak tried to throw it away. Yep. They did lose the Jags game because Dak threw it away. To start this game... By throwing a pick six to a D end and then rally, including the third and 30 to a guy you just signed off the street in T.Y. Hilton, that's a not only a great play, but a moment that can be galvanizing for the team. And so we know, Greg, that the defense can be excellent, even though it hasn't been recently. Mm -hmm. The offense just put 40 up on Philly. If you're the Cowboys, you've got to say, okay, We've got the only quarterback in the NFC playoff picture that's in the prime of his career and is supposed to be a Pro Bowl-level player. We're healthier than these other teams. We have just shown that we can score 40 against the number one seed. Why can't this be the team that breaks the quarter-century drought and makes a conference championship game? So, I listen, I believe way more in the Cowboys after yesterday's game, and I would have felt that way, to be honest even if Philly had scored on the final drive and beat them 41-40. Because putting 40 up on this Eagles team means something, and they did it. So I'm, I'm not as excited as you are about being more encouraged about the Cowboys, but I am. I am. I'm more impressed with the Cowboys, even with the way they won against a Jalen Hurts-less -less mm -hmm. Eagles team. Yeah. And the reason why is this. You said it. For me, that defense can improve. But to see that offense take a step in scoring points and putting up yards and Dak overcoming a potential dagger early in that game, that was huge. Because what we've seen over the course of their season has been the defense winning games for them. Well, the defense is... Let, let's go down it. Defense. In the last three games, this is why it was more impressive for me. Yeah. Because in the last three games, the defense has given up 424 yards a game. That's 34, 31st in the league. Yep. 293 of those are passing yards, which we look at their secondary and we're like, man, you got Trayvon Diggs, you got all these guys, they're going to get interceptions, mm -hmm. they're going to do all this stuff. They haven't been able to do those things. Last in sacks. Yeah, that's what With that front four... Michael Parsons leading the way yeah. and others last in sacks in the last three games. This is the team that is as predicated, has predicated yeah. on <laughs> getting to the quarterback, which then yeah. protects your secondary. And then, but, but what makes this team resilient and what makes me confident about this team, 
You just heard all of that, that st- those statistics, mm-hmm. but then they're third. When it comes to takeaways, they're still top. Yeah. Like, they're still leading they're still the league in takeaways. Yep. They're getting three takeaways versus the two yeah. that they were getting all season don't you long. I think that's a little bit of fool's gold. I, it, it, a it, team that, I, like, lives off of takeaways. I'm going to tell like, you why I, I don't think it's fool's gold. Because they've been leading the league in takeaways. Mm-hmm. They've been very good up front. They've been getting sacks. They've been getting pressures on the quarterback. That's what I believe is fool's gold. They're going to start back getting to the quarterback. Okay. They're not going to go three games and not have any sacks to show for. That's just not who they are. And offensively, if you can then put up points, which in the last three games offensively, no, no they've improved. Yeah. Fifth in yards per game, second in points per game. Like, that's, you, that's a vast improvement for the Dallas Cowboys. So skeptical. they have a lot to do. Well, I'll show, I'll show you the sacks numbers that yep. Josh, Josh drew up the sacks number. They were, the problem is they were first in sacks. Mm-hmm. And so they were first, and then they're, all of a sudden they've only got one. And that was against the Texans. That was against the Prince who was promised, who cooked them. And then yesterday against, against Gardner. So for me, I felt, Nick, that we always looked into the crystal ball of the future and we said, all right, we know what's going to doom the Cowboys. It's going to be a Dak getting careless with the ball. It's going to be a Mike McCarthy clock management issue. Right. And McCarthy at the end of the game yesterday wasn't great. But, so, but now I think it's going to be this defense can't get to the quarterback and someone doesn't give up the ball. They just hold the running backs, hold on to the ball. The quarterback doesn't throw it to the other team. And all of a sudden, like, uh oh, we're lo- we lost in the shootout. Well, but, so, but the th- problem with that to me is. The losing in a shootout is who who's shooting against you, I mean, and this I is why Brady, the cow. But, this is to yeah. me why this does circle back to Dak Prescott, mm-hmm. because he's of go through the NFC potential playoff teams: Philly, Jalen, Young, inexperienced, played one career playoff game; Minnesota, Kirk Cousins, it, not young, but only one playoff victory, and not a guy that typically terrifies people; Brock Purdy, seventh round rookie, obviously no playoff experience; Brady, all the playoff experience in the world, but everyone thinks that team is terrible, and by the way, it's looked terrible, even if Brady still scares you. Sure. Daniel Jones never been to a playoff game. Taylor Heineke, one playoff game experience ever, or Carson Wentz, I suppose, who's just gotten hurt in all this playoff experience. Is Seattle, Geno, no playoff experience? Th- those are your potential playoff teams. I guess you can include Green Bay as a possible, but Green Bay and Dallas couldn't play each other until the conference championship game because they're both wild cards. This is going to overlook Detroit. So, oh, I'm sorry, you're right. I forgot about Detroit. My bad. Jared Goff does have some playoff experience, even though his most recent experience was not good, you know, coming in for Walford, if you remember that, yeah, post-Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And so, if you're the Cowboys, you're like, hey, who has a $40 million quarterback? Us. How old is he? 29. Peak of his powers. Prime. Mm-hmm. Whose team, while we see the Eagles just lost Lane Johnson, lost Monte Maddox, which team is getting healthier? Us. Which team showed you, for the first two months of the season, we can be a top three defense, and it's showing you for the last six weeks we can be a top three offense, us. If we combine those things in the weaker NFC, now are they my pick? They're not my pick. But if they were to play in Philadelphia round two, which it's very, if there aren't upsets in the bracket, that's what you would get. Don't you think Dallas goes in there and mean like, okay, yeah. you beat us when Dak wasn't there. We beat you when Jalen wasn't there. Right. But we showed you that we can hang 40 on you without playing a perfect game. Dak did get sacked six times. Dak did throw a pick six. They still hung 40 on him. And Philly, potentially rusty, dealing with these injuries. I'd be real nervous if I were the Eagles. Real quick, uh, Greg, on the pick six. If the pick six comes late in the game, it's the story of the game. It came early in the game, so we're like, man, no big deal. It was early in the game. Are you worried about Dak throwing pick sixes? Well, I've been worried about Dak. Sure. In, in any game, since, he, since he's come back from injury, mm-hmm. when he throws 25-plus times, he's thrown an interception. Well, every every that's yeah, that's been that a problem. One. It's been problematic. Why is it problematic? Because you're putting a defense back on the field. We saw Michael Parsons at the end of that game. Literally, yeah, time out. Time out because yeah. he was tired. Because he was wind. He's tired. Like you put defenses that aren't getting pressure, but doing everything that they possibly can to get after the quarterback, expending all that energy. You give them another series on top of that in the postseason. It's going to come back to bite you. But Dak has to be the fact that he responded though with 14 straight Absolutely. completions is is to me. Because that was, I don't want to call that a fluky play, but it's not like he was thrown into coverage. It's a deep, Josh Sweat made an unbelievable play. But the fact that it didn't rattle Dak's confidence yes. after they, how did the pre, the, the Jags game ended back back. with a pick six. This game basically started with a pick six, and then he rallied. That, to me, 
is potentially a galvanizing moment for him. Okay. Uh, Gardner filling in for Jalen. Mm -hmm. Had an up and down game. Completed 26 passes. 24 to the Eagles. 2 to the Cowboys. Uh, 3 total touchdowns. Also gave the Cowboys a present by fumbling the ball. So the game was close and Gardner did move the ball yeah. at times for both teams. Nick, does this help or hurt Jalen's MVP case? A uh, quick note to the viewers. Yeah. This is a Patrick Mahomes conversation.